Okay, what's up guys? Last weekend I gave out a free play Dan Ige by KO TKO 4.1 odds in return and uh, yeah you should follow my Instagram for free picks, predictions, underdogs, everything. Now let's get to the breakdown and predictions for UFC 298. First off we got Andrea Lee versus Miranda Maverick. I'm picking uh, Miranda Maverick in this fight. I think the grappling, the youth, and the the fact that she only loses when she struggles against more physical fighters than her uh, makes the difference here. So I think Miranda, also being 26 years old, will have more improvements than Andrea Lee, who's only 35 years old. So my pick is Ma Miranda Maverick by decision. On to the next one, where we got Val Woodburn versus Oban Elliott. So, when watching tape, Oban the uh, Oban Elliott looked pretty good in his last fight against Kike Brito, who's a very powerful striker. And um, yeah, Val Woodburn very bad in his fight. He, he was uh, gassing out against a 42-year-old fighter, and. Uh, yeah, after that, of course, he had the fight with uh, Bo Nickel uh, getting knocked out in the first round. That's nothing to be ashamed of. But yeah, I don't think uh, Woodburn is that good. I don't think he got much power. And I don't think he got that many skills in the area. He just seems to clinch up against the fence and not have any technique at all. So, Elliot, I think he will be the better fighter here overall in the... I don't know, probably get a finish, I'm not so sure, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely picking open earlier to get this win. Now we got Just Quinnen versus Danny Barlow. I think uh, Quinnen, he struggled a lot with the reach disadvantage in his last fight against Trey Waters. And Barlow is a physically more gifted fighter than Waters in my opinion. He's stronger, he's more powerful, and uh, yeah, he got that insane reach advantage of 8 inches, uh, and he's pretty big too. So, I think we're gonna see uh, Danny Barlov probably get a knockout with a counter strike, Quinlan trying to close the distance, and Barlov hitting him on his way in. On to the next one, we got Mingyang Sang versus Brenson Ribeiro. Okay, so I was watching on this one and uh, I thought to myself, why is Brinson Ribeiro underdog here? And I still don't get it now. Yeah, he got 6 inch reach advantage, I think he got a great jab. Both are pretty bad defensively, mostly Ming Yang saying, I, don't, I think he gets hit by everything. But uh, mostly Ribeiro when he's getting pressured. Ming Yang Seng doesn't have any grappling, so if Ribeiro takes him down, I think he makes quick work of him on the ground. But I also think in the striking, I got a favor. Ribeiro, he's more powerful, he's faster, he's got a longer reach. His jab is gonna be there all day. Ming Yang Seng doesn't move his head at all. And I think Ribeiro has been way better competition than Ming Yang Seng. So I'm definitely picking Ribeiro to get a first round finish in this way. Okay, now we got Rinya Nakamura versus Carlos Vera. So this one is a no-brainer in my opinion. I think Rinya uh, beats Carlos Vera 10 out of 10 times. Uh, of course it's in May, so anything can happen. But this is very safe in my opinion to take Nakamura in this spot. And it's also reflected in the odds. I think... Uh, we know what's up with Vera, he's 36 years old, he's not that great at this point, he's not skilled at all, some of his wings are by a guillotine choke, it's nothing impressive. Um, I think it's just a matter if Nagamura finishes on him or not, and I think that's the case here. He got way better boxing, great power, and better wrestling, and better, probably better a BJJ. I think Nagamura is really improving that part of his game. He couldn't finish Garcia, but I think Garcia is very tough and great submission defense. So, yeah, my biggest winner Nagamura. 
Round one finish. On to the next one. It's a heavyweight bout between Marcos Rogerio de Lima versus Justin Taffer. And um, De Lima is getting up there in age. He's yeah, pretty old at this point, 38 years old. I think I'm slightly leaning towards De Lima in this spot, but yeah, it's mostly because the Tafa family doesn't have any grappling at all. But if so, if Lima avoids the big shots from Tafa, then he should be able to grapple towards probably a, a decision win. But I wouldn't be shocked either if De Lima knocks him out too. Tafa has been knocked out in the past by Jorgen De Castro. But anything can happen in this spot, and you can count out Justin Tafa with the amount of power he got. So, yeah. Also, De Lima coming off a brutal knockout loss to Derek Lewis, but he's a whole different uh, specimen than Justin Taffer. So, yeah, my pick is De Lima by decision. Now we got Amanda Lemos versus Mackenzie Dern. It's a very 50 50 fight, but I'm picking Lemos to win. I think it's either Dern gets a grappling going here or. And it's tough enough to withstand Lemos' knockout power on the feet. Uh, but I think Dern is too hittable at this point, And I think I'm in the Lemos going to catch her and uh, get a knockout win here. Also, it's concerning that uh, Mackenzie Dern is coming back only after three months after getting knocked out like she she did. And she took a lot of damage. So, yeah, my pick is Amanda Lemos by knockout, probably in the second or third round. On to the next one, Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kobilov. Kobilov, he is a great striker. He got great takedown defense, but I, I think he slowed down quite a lot against Durayev, who doesn't have great cardio either. So it's not that great of a look. And when Durayev uh, got him down, then uh, Kobilov had nothing to answer off his back so uh, that was a pretty bad look for him and uh, Hernandez relentless grappler keeps coming uh, pretty tough but he had that first round uh, f- finish loss to I think it was yo, yeah it was uh, Kevin Holland by TKO to the body so that was not a good look and uh, I'm worried that could happen here but if it doesn't happen and uh, Hernandez is tough enough then he will get probably a late finish in this fight. So I'm picking Anthony Hernandez by round 3 finish. On to the next one. We got highly anticipated fight. At least ranking wise. Not to watch it. Pretty boring fighter. Mirab Valish really. But he gets the job done. Uh, and he's facing Triple C Henry Cejudo. Uh, Cejudo is now 37 years old. So... I don't think uh, Suhudo can deal with my rap at this point in his career. I think he would be the favorite if it was like three, four years ago. But uh, in this part, I think Suhudo got too much on his plate to deal with the relentless pressure from my rap. So I'm picking Mirab Valishvili by decision. Outworking Triple C. Now on to Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary. Ian Gary got a lot of hate, so people are probably wishing uh, Jeff Neal gets the upset in this spot, but I don't think that's the case. I'm picking Ian Gary, and I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can when picking these fights, so I get the best quality picks for you guys. And uh, yeah, Neal, he got a decent punches change in this spot, but that's about it. If he looks bad at the weigh-ins, he got very little chance of winning. If he lo- if he looks good, then he got a decent chance, but that's all. I think Gary is the much more skilled fighter, and if he is just careful enough, then he should win a decision or maybe get a late finish. But I don't think he's getting the late finish when he couldn't even finish Magni, so I'm picking young Gary by decision. Now to the co-main event between Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa. And... Uh, I'm picking the underdog in this part. It's not about skill, it's about like physical attributes. I think 
Bob Costa is way too durable. It's hard. He swings hard. He will pressure. He will be in Whitaker's face. And I don't think Whitaker can deal with the pressure at this point in his career. So I think if maybe Costa can do something similar to Drigas to Plessis, but of course Costa is not as good as fighting the style as Drigas is. So yeah, I think the odds should be way, way closer than they are. And I, I gotta pick Paulo Costa in this spot at Odno Dog Odds. And I think he gets probably a round two a KO, TKO. Overwhelming Whitaker up against the fence. And now for the main event Alexander Volkanovsky against Ilya Tuporia. Ilya Tuporia, the undefeated fighter. He's only 27 years old, gonna improve a lot from fight to fight. As we saw his last time around, he showed incredible boxing skills against a very good fighter in Josh Emmett. Although he was old, he still hits hard and moves very well for uh, for his age. And uh, then we got Alexander Volkanovski, the great. He has been uh, defending his title for years in the featherweight division and he's a great fighter. But uh, he's getting up there in age. He's now uh, 35 years old. And uh, I think Topori has got to be my pick here. I think he's the young, hungry bull in this fight. Although I think he's, uh, I think he's less skilled compared to Volkanovski overall, but I think he got better boxing. Volkanovski got more diverse striking and better kicks and better footwork, better feeling inside the cage, and of course more experience. But I think durability, power, and and uh, the boxing and pressure from Tuporia is gonna be too much in this spot. And uh, I, I'm picking Tuporia to get a uh, round two, round three. KO, TKO, finish in this fight. And uh, to my most confident picks, I got Rinyan Nagamura, of course, Mirab Dvalishvili, Ian Gary, and uh, Miranda Merrick. And uh, my best underdogs is Ribeiro, Toporia, and Costa. And that was all for me. Guys, I would appreciate if you like and subscribe, comment your picks, predictions, if you disagree with anything. And uh, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for your time.